balancing a redox equation. So what equation are we going to balance here? Well, we're going to balance this one. Permanganate anion plus oxalic acid or diethanoic acid. And that goes to manganese 2 plus and carbon dioxide. So here we have an example of a redox equation. OK, so something is being reduced. That means that inevitably something else is being oxidized. Oxygen is not very easy to oxidize. The only thing that can oxidize oxygen is essentially fluorine. So it's op oxygen that's being oxidized in this system. The element that's actually being oxidized here is carbon. So if you work out the oxidation state of carbon in oxalic acid. So what is the oxidation state of hydrogen here? It's plus one. So what you have in order to balance the charges here, you must have carbon in an oxidation state of three. Now, the carbon in carbon dioxide is in what oxidation state? Four. So this is clearly a case of carbon being oxidized from oxidation state plus three to oxidation state plus four. Now what we need to do immediately on here is to, do, is to essentially recognize that. So the first step in balancing a redox equation is to recognize what species is being oxidized, how many electrons are involved in that step, and which species is being reduced, and how many electrons are involved in that step. So here we go. We've got manganese 7 plus 5 electrons goes to manganese 2. And we have our oxalic acid going to carbon dioxide and two electrons. Of course, it's a one electron per carbon, but we have two carbon-3 centers in oxalic acid. And of course, we're also getting protons, which, as you'll see, is quite important in this process. The next thing that we need to do is we need to basically marry these up. So if this is a five electron process and this is a two electron process, what we need to do is to find the lowest common multiple of five and two so that we have a balance between our electrons in reduction and our balance between our electrons in oxidation. So what we have to do is balance these two equations, multiply each of these equations by the factor that will give us 10. So obviously, this first one needs to be multiplied by 2, the second one by 5. Okay. That will give us the following equation. It will give all the following two equations, 2 manganese. 2 manganese 5 plus 10 electrons going to 2 manganese 2, and we have 5 oxalic acids going to 10 carbon dioxide molecules, 10 electrons, and 10 protons. Now, what's the next step? The next step is basically recognizing that we don't actually have manganese 7 plus cations here. What we have in our solution is permanganate anions. And what happens to the oxygen in those, or the oxide? We need to balance out those oxygen atoms. And there was a clue at the beginning of this question. Oxidation of oxalic acid in acidic aqueous solution. And that acidic part is no accident. Those protons are essential in these redox reactions because those protons react with our oxide anions to give us water. When you have these complex oxide anions at the beginning of your equation in acidic solution, they react with protons and they ultimately give us water. So here we have two permanganate anions. The permanganate anion contains four oxygens. So we're going to take all four oxygens in each species, that's eight oxygens in total, eight O2 minus ions. That will require 16 protons to make eight molecules of water. So in order to balance out this requirement, we need to use 16 protons to generate eight molecules of water. Now, what we need, you need to make sure is that you've balanced the charge on both sides of the equation. So you have to have a situation where your charge on your species is equal. So what we need to do is on the left-hand side of this equation, we've got a charge of 4 plus, And the charge on the right-hand side of this equation is 4 plus as well. So make sure you've balanced your charges in this system. Now, we've got our, our oxidation of our oxalic acid equation. Now what we need to do is to add these two equations together. 
So if you do that, you've got two permanganate, 16 protons, five oxalic acids, two permanganates, 10 CO2s, two, 10 H+, and eight water molecules. And immediately you will say, okay, but you've got an excess of protons in this system. We can simplify this equation by basically subtracting 10 protons from both sides. And if you do that, you're left with this, which is the simplest way of expressing this chemical reaction.